Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Isn't this the cutest granny square you've ever seen? It has a little bow on it. How cute is it? I think that's absolutely adorable. You could probably even modify that to make it a butterfly. So if you've already done my bow video, the quick and easy bow, the pink one, you will know the basics to this bow. It is done slightly different so you may have to watch this video just to see what we did. We didn't wrap the center around the bow. And if you know how to make a granny square already, you're also going to find this tutorial very easy. And if you don't know how to make the bow or the granny square, no problems because we're going to learn together how to make it in this video. So let's get started on the lesson. So here is another one that I completed. This was just my tester to see if this pattern would actually work. And I've used the same colour in the first round of the granny square as I did with the bow. But you I mean, you can do it any combination that you like. I just used up scraps here. This is just what I had laying around. It was just for the video. I probably wouldn't use this colour combo for a blanket. But hey, if you're using up scraps, you can use any colour you like. And I reckon this would look a would make a really good scrap afghan. You can make a whole heap of granny squares and then um, join them together. So. Let's get started with this really cute lesson. We are going to need some yarn of your choice. I'm using 8 ply. I'm going to be using one strand at a time, just using two colours. I'm going to need a pair of scissors, a hook that goes with your yarn. Mine's a 4mm because that's recommended for 8 ply, double knit or sports weight. And also a sewing needle. So what we need to do first of all is grabbing our yarn. We're going to make a magic ring, and I'm sure there's plenty of ways to do this, but this is the way I was taught. I'm not very confident when I do it, but I'll show you how I work it. So I have the short piece in this hand, and I just wrap the yarn around like so. I put it over the other strand, so I'm just laying it across the top. I go in with my hook, and then grab that yarn and pull through. Picking up our yarn. I just want to chain one to secure it. And don't let go of these bits down here. So what we want to do now is chain four. One, two, three, four. We are going to be working five trebles into that center ring. So what we need to do is wrap our yarn twice so double crochet you do it once, treble you do it twice. So I just hang on to it that with my finger so it doesn't all get lost. And then what I do is just hold it like that. I find that it's just more secure for me to work with. So I've got two loops on my hook. I've wrapped my yarn twice, so I've got twice. And then we're going to get into the middle of the ring. Pull up a loop. You have four on your hook. You're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. We're going to do that again. So one and two, going into the ring, pull up a loop. You have four on your hook, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. You're going to wrap twice again. Get into the center, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And we need five trebles. We don't count this first chain in this one. So that's one, two, three. Four. and five. So now what we need to do to complete our petal we need to do that four chains because we want to imitate what's on this end. So one, two, three and four. We want to slip stitch down into here. So I just hold mine like that. I find it easier to work with. So I've still got the loop. I'm just holding it like so. So we're going to slip stitch. So we're going to go into the loop, yarn over and then pull that loop through this one. So now what we want to do, we want to imitate this whole side. 
So we need to chain four again. And then we want to wrap our yarn twice because we're going to do five more trebles into the ring. Yarn over twice, go back in. So we just want to make five of these stitches, sorry. And then we're going to have our chains as well. So they're not actually counting the stitches in this project. So one, two, three, four. And they normally do in most projects, your chaining counts as your first stitch. But today, we're not going to count him. So you've got your chain, and you've got one, two, three, four and five and we want to do a chain four because we need to imitate what we did at the beginning and we want to slip stitch back down into the ring I'm just going to pull that out so I don't lose my stitching so now we have this weird looking thing <laughs> What you're going to do is you're just going to pull slightly on the short piece here. We don't want to tighten it right up because we do need the ring still for the next next step. But we're just going to tighten it a little bit because, to tell you the truth, it's quite hard to work with when it's all floppy. So you're going to leave it so we've got a little bit of a ring. So we're going to put our work back on our hook. Sorry guys, but I'm finding it really hard to stay in the camera today. I think my angle's all wrong where I'm sitting at the, at the desk. So this is going to annoy you a little bit at the back, but we're going to try and work with it. So what we want to do now is chain four. Yep, another chain four. You're going to not remember, not forget these chain fours. One, two, three, and four. And what we're going to do is this part we're going to work behind the bow because our granny square is behind the bow. So okay, so we have our chain four. Please excuse that noise in the background. It shouldn't go on for much longer. And what we're going to do is we are going to be working behind the bow. So I'm just going to take my stitch out. And behind the bow, we are going to find the middle stitch. So we've got one on each side two on each side, three on each side, and this one is the middle. So count one, two, three, and the fourth stitch is our middle stitch. And what we're going to be doing, I'm just going to move that aside so you can see it properly. We're going to be working into these two stitches here. I'm trying to grab those stitches. There we go. See these two stitches here that come down onto our chain? That's where we're going to be slip stitching into. So we've got our chain four, and we're going to flip it around because we're working around the back of our bow. So we've done our chain four, and we're going to slip stitch into that fourth stitch. So one, two, three, and four. We're going to slip stitch down in these two stitches, and we've only got to do this four times around, so it might be a little bit tricky. But I think this is the best way to do it because the other way it showed through the front and it just looked really silly. So we're going to grab those loops and then we're going to pull through. Okay, so that noise is finished in the background now so we can continue on. So what we want to do now is chain four again. And then what we want to do is slip stitch, see how we've got, this is the end of the bow, we're going to slip stitch around there. So we're going to go into the center, grab a yarn at the back, and this bit might be a little bit awkward, but grab yarn at the back and pull around, so you're pulling it around the front, we'll do that again, into the circle, grabbing your yarn, pulling it back through the circle, 
and then pulling through that loop. And make sure that's nice and tight, don't make it all sloppy because it can loosen up there. So we're going to chain four again. One, two, three and four. And we're going to slip stitch to this centre stitch on this side. So there's one, two, three and four. And after you've made a few of these you won't even need to really count them, you'll be able to eyeball it yourself. So we need to go down into these loops here. So let's try and get them. Once you've done this a few times it's quite easy. I'm trying to do it slow so you guys can see. But once you do it normally, <laughs> it's a lot easier than what I am doing now. There we go. So we're going to make sure our yarn is nice and tight there. And we're going to work a slip stitch. What we're doing here is creating these loops on the back. See these loops here? And that's where we work our granny stitch into. Or the granny square into, I should say. So we should have four lots of chains. So four lots of four chains. So we've got one, two, we just did number three. And then we want to do number four. So we need to do another chain four. One, two, three, and four. And this time, because this is our last one, we need to slip stitch to the very first one. So see our chaining here? We're going to slip stitch to this first one here. And we're going to go to the first chain if we can. And slip stitch into that first chain. So I'm going under both loops. Because it does make it more secure. And we're going to make a slip stitch. Now if you like you can change colour. I'm actually going to change colour because I find that it shows up better on the camera. So what we want to do is cut off our yarn. And then just put our tail through the loop. And then pull tight. What we can do, we can actually work over this tail as we go. So now what we're going to do as well, see this other tail, so this is where we just finished off. This little fella here is our magic ring and we are going to pull that tight because we want the centre of our bow to tighten up and not have a big hole in the middle. So make sure all your chains are at the back, so just poke them through if they're trying to come through the front. We're just going to pull tight on that until our hole there is gone. So you might have to just fiddle with the chains on the back there. Make sure they're still there and they haven't got all stuck inside your bow. So which one was it? It's this one. So now you're just going to grab your needle and we're just going to sew our end, so not the end, well you can sew the end that you just finished off if you like, but if you haven't finished off you won't have one. So we're just going to weave this, I'm going to weave it through the front because it's a bit busy at the back, there's chains and types of things going on back there. So we're just making sure we're pulling that tight, we're just closing up the hole. And then weave it back through. And then cutting that off. So you might need to just need to, yeah. it's a mouthful. You might just need to adjust your bow just a little slightly, make it look all pretty. And then we're gonna work into this mess that we've got on the back here. So I'm not going to sew that one in because I can actually work over that with my new colour. So this project's really good for using up scraps. And here's a red one that I prepared earlier. <laughs> so that's what it looks like in all one colour. That was just my practice piece. So I might actually snip that off. And that can be my first little bow that I did. Anywho, I'll fix that up later. So grabbing your new colour, 
you are going to slip stitch into one of these chain loops. You want to have your bow facing you because when you're working, if it's not facing you, you're going to have your granny square back to front, like you're going to be looking at the wrong side of your crochet work. So having your bow facing you, we're going to pinch one of these loops. Now if you happen not cut off your yarn, you won't need to do this part, but if you have, we're going to flip that over and join this in. So just doing a chain stitch to secure, pulled in on the short bit at the back. Just make sure your chain stitch is over on the start of the chain there. So what we want to do, and if you have, um, haven't cut off your yarn, you're still going to make sure that your bow is facing towards you and you're going to be working. So just like fold that down just to make sure we know we're at the front. So we're going to chain up three and if you know how to make a granny square this part is going to be very easy for you. And if you don't, that's okay. We're going to continue on and we'll show you how to do it. So I'm going to wrap this over the top of my little loop there and I'm going to work as I go. So we're going to double crochet now. We finish with our trebles. You're going to yarn over go into our little chain 3 loop and going to complete a double crochet. If you don't know how to do it, you yarn over, go into the loop, pull up a loop, you've got 3, pull through 2 and pull through 2. In a corner of a granny square we have 3 stitches, so 3 double crochets, a chain 1 or a chain 2 depending on how you make yours. I normally just do a chain one and then we have three more double crochets into the same space. So we've got this counts as our first stitch, so that's one, two and three. We need to chain one and then we're going to work three more double crochets into this corner here. One, two, and three. So this is the corner of our granny square. See how that chain one creates that little gap? That's where we work into on our next round. So now what we want to do is find our next chain four loop. So folding it down, there's our next chain four loop. So we want to repeat this. We want to do three double crochets. So I've wrapped my yarn, gone into the stitch for a double crochet. We need three of these. So we've got three. We're going to chain one. And see how I just grabbed hold of that part of the chain, grabbed hold of that part of the stitch, and just shifted over? You might need to do that to fit them all in. So now we're going to do three more double crochets. Now, did I even tell you I did a chain one there? I don't think I did. So it's three double crochets. Sorry guys. Too busy gas bagging. Chain one and then three double crochets. If you know how to do a granny square you probably would have um, realised that. But if you didn't, I've got to teach you the right way, don't I? So like I said, some people do put chain one and some people do put chain two. I have quite loose tension, that's why I only use a chain one. If you're a really tight crocheter, you might want to try two in the corner. So next loop going into the stitch, into the loop, so in the hole there, working three double crochets. Then we're going to do a chain one, whilst I'll grab some yarn, chain one, and we're going to work three double crochets. We're going to fold this part of the bow down and we've got our last chain four space. So going into the space we're doing three double crochets. Chain one and three double crochets.
there we go and then what we need to do now we need to join our row find our third chain so one two and three you're going to grab that front loop and the back loop I find if you slip stitch into both loops there it's a nicer finish and there ladies and gentlemen we have our bow on our little square how cute is it the first one of my friends that has a baby girl look out it's going to be bow central so you are going to have to sew those ends in and if you don't know how to make a granny square I'm going to show you the next round if you do know how to make a granny square you already know what to do you can continue on for as many rows as you like but if you don't I'm going to change color so that it's easy to see so I'm going to put the tail through the loop and pull and I'll sew this end in at so this end in at the end of the project when I finish the square so now to change colors if you didn't want to change color what you would do so pretend I didn't cut that off you go into that next stitch you do a slip stitch you go into the next stitch so the next one here with a slip stitch into the next one there so into that corner space see our corner space which is where a chain one is you work a slip stitch into there and then you will continue on but I've cut mine off so I'll show you what you do there so I'll just pull that back out because we don't do that when we cut it off we find our next color which I can't find excuse me why I gave him my scraps Oh, fluoro green, that's not really going to work, is it? And we all know my favourite colour is grey. So we've got plenty of that laying around. So let's work with some grey. So we have the corner. So the corner space is, see how we've worked all these stitches into that chain four? We've got one, two, three and then a chain one and one two three you're going to go into the chain one space grab your yarn just lay it over the top of the hook grab it and pull it through so you chain uh, you, you chain you sew in your ends at the end of your project but what you can do when you just start your new color is just lay it on the top and we're going to work over it a little bit I don't like to work over this stitch too much because it it shows up and sometimes can come out so you're chaining up three you're working two double crochets into the same corner space so into that chain one space you're working two double crochets and a chain one and then three double crochets into all into that same space it's all going in there okay now this bit's a little bit different we worked a corner and then a corner but now we've created this hole here so what we need to do is work into there so we need to do three double crochets into this hole and this is how you do it like a traditional basic granny square this is how you would work it if you didn't do the bow in the beginning sorry guys this yarn's getting stuck I love the center pull balls but this one just wouldn't cooperate and it's just all ended up in a mess there we go three stitches in there so our next space is our corner so see over here we've got a corner we're working there and our corner is our three double crochet chain one three double crochet so going into this space we're doing three double crochet chain one and three double crochet so 
So now we have to do into this space here. So we need to do three double crochet. And then we're going to work into our next corner. If you hear random noises, it's the dog. He's just near me, sniffing the carpet. One, that's two, and three, and a chain one, and then three double crochets. And you just repeat this all the way around. So you are going to do three into that next gap and then your corner space and then three into the next gap and you're going to repeat that all the way around and if I do say so myself I think that this is so cute so I'm just going to finish off sorry guys getting carried away again I'm going to finish off around here and we'll meet up at the end so once we get to the end we need to slip stitch into the third chain so that's number one number two number three Grabbing that little front loop and then grabbing that back loop. And then, oh, I normally do a chain one when I finish. I do that on actually most of my projects, if not all of them. And then cutting off. So, what that does is just secures that down even more. So, what you can do, you can keep adding, adding rows every time you get to a gap that's in between your corners you're going to add your three double crochets and when you get to the corners you're going to add your three double crochets chain one and three double crochets now I'm sorry but I'm going to say it again I think that is the cutest granny square I've ever seen don't forget to sew in your ends and if you aren't a member of our Facebook or Ravelry page please come over and say hi we would love to have you we have over 5,000 people on the Facebook page. It is such a friendly page. People help you if you get stuck. They show their work that they've made. You can show your work that you've made. And we are really, we're really a nice bunch over there. So come and join us. There are lots of face, fa there are lots of pages on Facebook that are similar. So Crochet Crowd, Beth in Texas, and uh, the Art of crochet by Teresa I think I think that's what her page is called but yeah check them out too even if you join Facebook page just to hang out with us it is so much fun so don't forget to subscribe to my videos as there will be heaps more coming up and you know how it goes guys till next time happy crochet hi everyone and welcome to another lesson isn't this the cutest little granny square you've ever seen it has a bow on it Whoops, don't look at my ends, I haven't sewn in yet. Isn't that just so cute? So if you've already done the bow tutorial, that's in the, the tutorial's done in pink, if you've already done that, you've got a heads up, you already know how to do this part. I do teach you how to make the bow in this video, and if you know how to make a granny square, you're going to find this tutorial really easy. But if you don't know how to make the bow or the granny square, stay tuned, and we'll teach you how to do it. Let's get started on the lesson. Hi everyone and welcome to another lesson. Isn't this the cutest granny square you've ever seen? It's got a little bow on it. How cute is it? I really like this. It's so cute. So it's a great project to use up all your scraps. As you can see I've just picked some totally random colours. Whatever I put my hand in the bag came out. That's what we used. So perfect project to use up those scraps and if you've already read... Oh, 